the most iconic voices in golf are back to save the day and ready to entertain in their newly weekly video podcast. Costas and McCord off their rocker. We're here with another edition of Costas and McCord off their rockers. We're back in Arizona and Peter, Gary, and myself, Mike Abram, co-host and producer, we got to thank all of our viewers, all of our subscribers. Thanks so much for helping us grow this show. And we're going to take it to new heights in 2024. A lot more episodes to come. Thanks to our great sponsors, Swing U and the Swing U app, Foresight Sports, their launch monitors, their sim in a box. Coach Costas, Peter uses them on all his lessons. Also CMC Design, makers of some of the coolest, best head covers, towels, golf equipment, fun things for tournaments. Go to cmcdesign.com to find out more. Uh, of course, Bono's Barbecue. We're having chicken and ribs. My wife's barbecuing tonight, and uh, you can't miss Bono's Barbecue. Whether you go to their store or get some of their sauce, it's amazing stuff. Earlier this week, I had the pleasure of attending the Arizona Golf Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Four people were inducted, Wade Dunnigan, Judy McDermott, great PGA Tour player Howard Twitty, and our very own Peter Costas. Peter was incredible. Of course, he's had a phenomenal, legendary career, and they were wise in putting him up last because he really entertained the crowd. And Gary and I were able to be there, along with one of Peter's students, Paul Casey. Uh, it was a great time to be had, and you're gonna get some of Coach Costas' great lessons. Again, every episode on Costas and McCord, off their rockers. But today, we've got a great guest with Gary. Uh, Gary calls him the most incredible athletic freak. Not only has he played professional golf, not only has he qualified and played in the United States Open, he's the course record holder at Whisper Rock. He's an ultra marathoner, former Olympic level skier. And without further ado, let's go to Whisper Rock, Gary McCord, and our incredible guest today. Look at this. That's a golfer. That is idiocy. No, don't, don't go up that. He's on the top of the frickin' rock. Welcome to Costas McCord off their rockers. <laughs> yes, we are. And I got a buddy here that uh, pretty much fits that bill. This is this is a guy. Trevor, who we saw climb that mountain up there in a nanosecond. And um, that's what we want to kind of bring you. I love outliers. I just, I always hung around the guys that were just a little off to the left of the plumb bob. And to find these guys and bring their stories. And Trevor, you've got quite a story. You're, uh, first of all, he's a professional golfer, a uh, professional skier. Uh, holds a course record here at uh, Whisper Rock in North Scottsdale. Uh, and oh, by the way, uh, John Rahm's here, Phil Mickelson's here, Max Holm is here. There's 35 of them that are here. He holds a course record. Uh, anyway, his story is it just its so unbelievable. Talking about it and visually, if we get later, you'll see what I mean. But Trevor, give me a little background. You, where'd you grow up? What happened? I know you were a skier, blah, blah, blah. Give me something. Yeah, so I grew up in a small town in Vermont. Um, my family was hyper-focused on skiing. My dad was on the U.S. ski team. My uncle oh. was as well. So um, that was always a big part of my life um, from the age of two. Um, and then as a child, it was my dream to, to be a World Cup Olympian. Um, okay. I went to a prestigious ski academy in Vermont where they produced pretty much the most Olympians in the country, um, Michaela Schifferin. Um, several Olympians so that was a big part of my life until I had a knee injury in my senior year of high school and let, let me interject how far did you get in the scheme so I made it to world junior championships junior Olympics um, I was top three in the country for my age um, oh, that's I, pretty good <laughs> now, what, what, what were you skiing or what did you have a specific that you're really good at in skiing so my two uh, favorite events were giant slalom and slalom more of a technical um, turning event okay um, but I raced alongside Lindsey Vaughn at world juniors um, 
And You're going fast. Going really fast. Really fast. I've always had that adrenaline component in okay. my life. Um, but when I pivoted to golf, um, I didn't really have that adrenaline component that I had when I was skiing. Explain that. Well, I think it can be counterproductive to have adrenaline when you're playing golf, okay. whereas skiing and some other physical activities where you react, it is more beneficial. Okay. I think sometimes my adrenaline got in my own way when I was playing golf. Okay, and you never, and again, he, he's played in US Opens. Uh, you were on the, what would now call the Corn Ferry Tour for years. Yes. Um, so he was a professional golfer out there. He, he lives in this combine here that we have of a bunch of professional golfers on all different levels. But yes. as you know, there's a lot of guys here that make their money doing this. Yes. And uh, it's a good environment to, to learn how to play. So, so you got hurt, you got hurt, blew something out, and then you went to golf after that? Yes. Um, actually, the first real golf tournament I played in was at the age of about 15. A good friend of mine invited me to go try to qualify for the U.S. Junior Amateur in Massachusetts. Okay. I tagged along with him. I ended up winning the qualifier. How old were you? I was about 15. Okay. And my first real taste of it was the U.S. Junior Amateur at Oak Hill in about I think it was 2002. Oak yep, Oak Wake, yep. Welcome to the real yeah, world. Yeah. Okay, so where'd you go from there? So that was my first taste of it. And um, after my knee injury, I decided to pursue golf. Okay. It was um, something new, something I was passionate about. Um, and my dad and my grandfather kind of pushed me in the golf direction. Um, I ended up getting a walk-on spot to North Carolina, UNC Charlotte. Okay. Um, we were 120th in the country my freshman year, and we ended up getting to number one in the country my junior year, Division One. And so you're rocking at this point. You, you we were rocking. Now, let me ask you a question: When when you got healthy and you're playing golf, did you ever go? Yeah, you know what? I need that adrenaline. I want to go back and go downhill. I definitely associate and identify as more of a skier than I do a golfer. Really? Um, I've just always gravitated towards speed, okay. whether it be driving fast okay. or just pushing the limits where I think... And we'll find out a lot about that a little <laughs> later. <laughs> Go ahead. I just think uh, managing my golf game, um, I didn't play the percentages like I should have. Okay. I would go for par, par fives and two where maybe I should have laid up to a, to a yardage, but that really didn't stimulate me. I wanted, if I had an opportunity to pull off the shot, I would try to do it. And now let me interject a little bit here. Um, I played a lot of golf with you out here just to help you kind of <laughs> look at you analyzing yourself from a guy that, that did television and everything else. Um, his swing speed is exceptional. We're gonna find out later why. Uh, exceptional, I mean, he hangs around 130 miles an hour. I'm guessing your ball speed is well, buck 90. 190 miles an hour, be. something like that. And he's, a, he's the longest, straightest driver I've seen. And, and most of the guys, in fact, the caddies told me that out here at Whisper Rock, which right now I think we've got two NCAA champions that are caddies out here. And they go without a doubt. And again, John Rom plays here, Homa, Phil, uh, there's, there's a bunch of them here. And he's the longest and the straightest. But when I played with him, I noticed one thing. You always hit driver. When <laughs> I would, if I'm caddying for you, I would never let you hit a driver. Are you kidding yeah. me? You're always trying to fit it into a four yard area and it's catastrophic if you miss. And I, I could see right away, I didn't know why with your golf swing, which is technically about as good as you can get. Why, and then I saw why. Uh, your adrenaline rush takes you and really takes you hostage. It does. I've always had the habit of kind of jumping into the deep end and and figuring out if I could swim. And, and I've kind of applied that to sort of everything I've been interested in mm -hmm. is I just, I want to push it. And I kind of worry about the consequences later. And I think as a golfer, that's, it's not conducive yeah. to good golf. Uh, now, t t tell me about, uh, say, so now your, your journey goes in and you start playing, playing golf, uh, you start competing and now all of a sudden you get, you get on the, the, uh, well, at that time, when, when I played, it was the Ben Hogan Tour. Now it's the Corn Ferry. What was it called? My first year was Nationwide Tour. That's it? Yep. Nationwide? It was the first year. It was in 2010. Um, 
I had just qualified for the US Open in 09 and I was in the top 15 through two rounds. So, you know, I was cruising. I was kind of on an upward trajectory um, playing with Dustin Johnson and, and a lot of the top players yep. of today. So. And, and what you know, what'd you learn? What'd you learn early in, I mean, you're really, <laughs> we're gonna have you fill out your report card right here. What, what you knew, you knew your problem, okay? How did you address it? I got too much adrenaline, I go for things, do I, have to, do I have to stop this insanity or do I just let it play out? What did you learn? I learned nothing. It's nothing. So <laughs> I oh, learned that I like to hit driver yeah. and I don't like to practice putting. Okay. I only like to practice the things I'm good at. <laughs> okay. Man, you, there's all those boxes that failure, failure, failure. Yes. You're checking. Yes. You're checking with your talent. I mean, you had extraordinary talent and you checked every wrong box. Yeah, looking back, you know, I could have I could have been more structured. I could have looked at it as more of a, a business opportunity, whereas I kind of just won it. And you know what? When we, we were sitting there looking at you on the driving range and we had a lot of balls in the back and I'm, I'm there with Sedlowski and Bob Tway and those guys and playing with you and so forth and I'm going, you know, he's not real big and he's generating a lot of club head speed. And um, so how did you go about, what was your process of going, okay, if I'm gonna hit it, a driver on every hole, let's hit it far on every hole. It was, I would say that was the one component of golf where I was being athletic. Okay. I, I didn't have a lot of um, thoughts. Um, whereas putting, for instance, I was more, n less of an athlete, whereas, I was more athletic when I was swinging the driver. And I think um, if you can get to a point where it's on autopilot, it's a, it's a good place to be when you're playing golf. So you, de you develop this, this speed. And then at one point, I, I, and I know, believe me, I know, um, you get playing, you get playing, and pretty soon you start having conversations with yourself everywhere. Like in baggage claim, I had most of my conversations <laughs> with myself were at baggage claim, waiting for my clubs to come off, to go to another event, I was gonna miss the cut or play bad yes. and go, what the hell are you doing? So at what point did you go, what the hell am I doing? I'm gonna do something else. I felt like I was spinning my tires because I knew I wasn't playing to where I wanted to play. However, I didn't know how to get to the next step. Mm -hmm. So I think learning to identify what you need to work on is, um, is huge. And now I think you see nutritionists, you see trainers, um, even with the teaching, um, we have all these aids that now quantify numbers. Mm -hmm. Whereas before it was, ah, you look a little under, oh, mm -hmm. you look a little over, You're, you know. We have these objective numbers that we can work towards. And I think that really gives you clarity and yeah. it gives you more hope yeah. that you're not yeah. spinning your wheels endlessly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is one thing that I love about fitness is I feel like it's, one of the most fair um, things as far as the work you put in is the, is the work you get out of it. Okay. So the more effort you put in in the gym, you know, if you put 100% into the gym, you're gonna get 100%. If you put 40% in the gym, you're gonna get 40% out. So I think where I became addicted was I was working really hard on my golf game and I never saw the payoff. Whereas when I got into fitness, I worked hard and I did see the payoff. I did see the sweat equity. So I think that was turned into an obsession for me. <laughs> and by the way, that's why he's sitting right here. Um, we all, you know, we all can look at our golf and everything else. But when you when you look at, and when I when I came out on the tour, you know, I watched and there were basically fat guys playing good golf. The only guy that was really fit was Gary Player. Hmm. And he kept doing push-ups and doing, you guys got to do a swing left side, right side. You got to get balance in your body. All that, yeah, what the hell here? And they're all drinking. And then, then all of a sudden, you know, Faldo came along with Norman and they started lifting a little bit and doing that. And then Tiger came out, oh my God. Now they rushed to the gym, everybody, okay? That's what we are right here with Trevor Murphy. Myself, when I'd heard about him and his workouts, heard about him. Um, and then the guys start, I'd ask the guys, other guys on the tour, hey, have you heard about what he's doing? They go, have you seen some of this stuff? <laughs> and, uh, no, you gotta take a look. 
So what, what we're going to look at here now, in my opinion, is next level idiocy. <laughs> Just to form another round. I've never seen workouts like this in any golfer, anywhere, any shape or form. Tiger, Dustin, good luck. Go back and play in the playpen. Uh, this stuff is amazing what you're going to see. When you run, Tiger runs, you know, four to eight miles a day. You're running how many? Uh, during COVID, most of my, I was running 100 miles a week at least. 100 yep. miles a week. Yep. So and you just run over mountains and do all that. Yeah, it, it definitely was not on pavement. It was it was in the mountains. I was going up and down. Yeah, a lot of, uh, I was training for my first 100 mile ultra marathon during COVID, uh, right after I quit playing golf. Really? Um, so. That's uh, it. All at once? All at once. A oh, hundred yeah. miles, <laughs> yep. all at once. Yep. Not yep. like a mile and then rest for a day and then all at once. All at once. How many of those you do? Um, I've only done 100. I've done multiple 50 milers. Uh -huh. um, but it, it, was a, it was a COVID time. Gyms were closed um, and I had to find a way to be active. And, um, and, and running and in nuts. the mountains was. And your adrenaline's going like this. <laughs> By the way, running the mountains. You know when you're watching the 16th hole at... Um, <clears throat> TPC at Scottsdale, and you can see the green there, and you can see the amphitheater. And you, if you look over that, the McDowell's are right there. Yep. Now, <laughs> and I, you showed me this picture, I didn't believe it, but the news camera here, the local station, um, was flying a helicopter over a fire on the top of that mountain, and I guess you were in training, and you ca they caught you running <laughs> over the mountain through the fire giant fire 20 foot flames and you're trying to stamp out the fire as you're running and the helicopter guy thought this was unbelievable like anybody else talk to us about that so that was one of my training runs i had done uh, almost every morning the same trail i rolled up to the trailhead at 4 30 a.m before um the trail had opened um and i saw a glowing in the distance ah. A glowing in the distance. And I okay. thought, hey, you let's know, instead of running away, let's run towards this. <laughs> let's see what this is. So as I got closer, I, I noticed it was a, a fire. Um, and I know and the prior night we had thunderstorm strikes. So I was like, oh, I bet, you know, assumed it was a, a thunder strike, a lightning strike. And as I got closer, um, I just, the trail I was running on was essentially a fire break. So my trail was it's stopping. A, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. a fire break? Yeah, it was a, I considered it a fire break. Okay, good. So anyways, I peed on it at first, dumped my water out on it, didn't do you much. peed on the fire. I peed on the fire. And then you threw your water. Yeah. And tell, tell me this was in the summer when you were doing this. This was the summer. This was the summer. <laughs> out okay, in the middle of the desert. That's just the quirkiness that I love about this and about your um, inclusion into training and getting your body ready for whatever reason um and the stuff that i see in fact you've got to explain this i said trevor send me some pictures and these pictures now again my training abilities um i don't i don't do a whole lot of of anything but you sent me these and, and the first one here you're on a bar it looks like a bar you've got a a ball there and you're going to do something stupid. So this is... So let, let, me, let me just play it for me. Now, oh my God, I mean, I would break my knee. What is this? So this is like an elevated curtsy pistol squat. So this, the reason... Elevated <laughs> curtsy yes. pistol squat. And mainly the reason for this is mobility in your hips. Okay. Um, getting into a deep squat, um, do do a little bit of stability as well involved. How balancing. Long did, honestly, how long did it take you to do one of those? <sighs> honestly, yes. it's it's been it's been perpetual training um, from early skiing days to now. So you did that skiing now. and skiing days. Um, okay, that looked really hard. Yes. Okay, really hard. <laughs> how many how many of those you do on each leg? About ten per leg. Ten per leg. Yeah. <laughs> ten. Her leg. Okay, now this one we're making friends. It looks like with a wall. Um, and you're on astroturf and you got your legs out at 90 degrees yeah. to your spine. And then you got one hand out. Where, where, 
So this, so this is drinking one night and fell down and went. Oh, hold it! I got to exercise. Essentially, so explain this. So this is a this is like an L sit on steroids. A lot of this is more of like a gymnast core movement, and I added an extra little element by elevating one arm, um, just to get a little just to, just to, to get a little a little, different. a little different. How long can you hold that? Uh, probably about a minute. A minute? Probably about a minute. Looks like your abs are doing okay. Don't look, look. Those are photoshopped in. Those are photoshopped. <laughs> I would do that to me, yes. Um, now this, this is a, a, a what is? So this is my, this is my uh, skiing, skiing athleticism coming out here. This is just essentially learning to be explosive, light on your feet, um, a lot of agility work, uh, which is beneficial for skiing and for golf. Okay. And, and both, obviously both sides. Both you're, sides. And you're doing 15 of those, something like that? Something like that. So a lot of these um, plyometrics, um, a lot of these exercises I do for time. So anywhere between 30 and 60 seconds. Okay. Right. How long is your workout when you sit down and go in? It can be anywhere between like two and a half and four hours. Two and a half to four hours. And every time I look at these, there's nobody in the gym. Are you <laughs> 30 in the morning? Yeah, I typically get to the gym at 4 or 4.30 in the morning. Good. Good. That's yeah. Really, really good. Obviously, he doesn't drink. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Now we're going down and we're getting. Yeah, this one's stupid. That's that uh, pistol thing. Yep. But you added a little added extra yep. traction to this. Yeah. Um, and again, how did how did you you went well stand on the ground and doing that with a ball out in front of me to counterbalance me is one thing. But let's stand on a so, ball. Yeah. Let's see how we can push it. Let's see how we can make it harder. So this ball is I'm essentially having to stabilize every direction. Yes. Whereas, yes. Um, so it just, it's uh, proprioception. So proprioception is essentially like what they call the sixth sense. It's, um, it's it, it, let me explain. Proprioception, close your eyes, <laughs> hold your hand out. How do you know your hand's out there? Yes. What do you feel? Well, you feel the tendons and ligaments brushing yes. against your skin and you know you're in an elevated state yes. over here with your eyes closed. So it's proprioception is basically a feeling of where you are essentially in time and space. like like cat-like reflexes right yes, just yes. in so this i i would assume this is really good for golf because your balance centers and your core yes. is now stabilized like hell yes and your glutes for rotation with your hips have got to be extraordinary to be able to do that yeah um there are benefits essentially to anyone that can do this can anybody do that <laughs> have you ever seen anybody do that I have not. I no. haven't either. <laughs> First time I saw anybody do that, and I went, no, I'm, I'm not. We got to get you doing you know, that, you know Gary. You look, like? you look like a seal. You just get on a ball and you start doing weird shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's a seal. Uh, it's now, this one, this one, for, for, for all of you guys out there and, and girls that are, you know, getting up over 50 towards my age, I, I suggest you don't watch this next one. Just go get something. Go to the refrigerator, get you a glass of water, stay there for a second. Because this, this hurts, this hurts my DNA. It hurts my ancestors to watch this. What the hell is this called? So this is a sissy squat backbend. I made up the a name. A, a sissy squat. Uh -huh. So this uh -huh. can... <laughs> That, why would you do that to your body? So this is just a total body mobility, flexibility exercise, core. You're essentially firing most muscles in your body. How long um, did it take you? Did you do that the first time? I did. I The first time you did that I, and you didn't blow up every muscle in your stomach? I did not. I did not. <sighs> Luckily. <laughs> I can't. Literally, I can't even watch that. Um, and just and, and and the last one that he didn't want me to show you this, but he he sent me that. Well, let me before we do that one. And as we saw, he was on the top of that mountain. Up, he went up there in two seconds. So you're you're half chimpanzee going up there. This when I saw this, remember I sat down and talked to you about yeah. what are you doing with your yeah. life? Yeah, you asked you're me. About, to kill yourself. You asked me about my life insurance policy. I did everything and... now. So this is where is this over over there? My yep. Thumbs. Okay, Tom's thumb, right? Yep. Now there's two slat marks that you're gonna see here, and you start at the bottom and you just put your hands against one side and your feet against the other, and you went up horizontally. Yep. I'm guessing is that 40 feet? Yeah, it's really it's up there. Really, it's up there. Now, 
let me ask when you do this do you have a plan when you get to the top and go oh now what do i do that's what i love about it that's the adrenaline so you part. had no idea at this point how you were going nope. to get from what you didn't no what it's, the it's, hell are you thinking? It's what I call problem solving. Yeah, no shit, problem you're going to die. <laughs> if you slip, you're dead. The funny thing about this yeah. is I get Those more... There's no funny thing. I get more nervous on a three-footer up the hill than I God. do doing this. <laughs> That's just... And you had no idea how you were going to... Well, this is a good idea. This is a good idea. And you start looking down and go, I'm at the top. How do I go from a horizontal position onto a ledge? Sometimes you just have to jump into the deep end. Really? Learn how to swim. And, and this one... This, I'm going to show you this for another reason. He didn't want me to. And he sent me this picture. I don't know. He probably made a mistake. And I, I gave it. Gary, I, that's supposed <laughs> to be on my OnlyFans account. How did you get that? Are you <laughs> subscribed? And I, and, I, and I gave it. I said, I told my wife, you got to look at this. She now uses this as her wallpaper. <laughs> and and you know what sick. she does? She shows her friends. And she says, this is my husband. <laughs> They go, what, what, what? So you become very famous in that circle of, um, of women that want to look at that picture. Wow, we know Gary McCord loves to find the outliers, the freak athletes, and boy, Trevor Murphy is that for sure. Don't attempt any of that bouldering or rock climbing unless you're a professional. Trevor is unbelievable. Don't go away, because we come back on Costas and McCord off their rockers, we've got a great lesson from Coach Costas from Peter and we've got more for you very soon, right here on Costas and McCord, Off Their Rockers. Costas and McCord, Off Their Rockers is presented by Swing U. Check out the incredible Swing U app. It gives you great GPS course data from T to green, and including green reading. And you know, even simple strokes gain features can help you improve your game. So go out and check on the App Store or at swingu.com. It's a great app. It'll shave strokes off your game. Bono's Pit Barbecue, an authentic Southern Pit Barbecue experience you won't forget. At Bono's, you'll find a genuine down-home pit barbecue experience, the whole experience. Our entire menu is smoked and prepared in-house from our mouth-watering smoked meats to our delicious sides made from scratch. Our smoker is always smoking, and everything to order, no shortcuts. With 20 locations across the country, from the sunshine state of Florida to the Rocky Mountains, Bono's culture is unmistakable at each of our restaurants. We offer incredible opportunities for franchisees. To find out more, visit our website, bonosbarbecue.com slash franchise. And remember, if you don't have a pit, it ain't legit. Special thanks to our sponsor, CMC Design. For over 30 years, CMC Design is a golf company that specializes in custom golf head covers, event gifts, and promotional products. They're one of the largest designer suppliers of accessories to the PGA Tour and other top golf retailers, clubs, resorts, and courses. With CMC Design, the possibilities are limitless. They have the largest in-stock collection of golf head covers and accessories for direct-to-consumer sales, retail, event gifts, and green grass pro shops. And their talented in-house team of designers and graphic artists can bring an idea to reality, creating custom items for any business category. Golf, events and tournaments, corporate marketing, executive gifts, boutique retail, or souvenirs. To find out more, visit cmcdesign.com. That's cmcdesign.com. Visit our website, costasmccord.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel or podcast and follow us on social media at Costas McCord Off Their Rockers. Now it's time for Coach Costas. Peter gives us some great tips to help our games. There are a lot of key things in the golf swing, too many to mention actually, but one of the most important is the rhythm and tempo of your golf game because if it gets out of whack, it's gonna make it really difficult for you to sequence the parts correctly and get the most out of your golf swing. And one of the biggest things I see happening with people is they get over the golf ball and their takeaway is so fast, so quick, and their hands and arms are already back here before the body's even had a chance to start turning. So you've gotta be able to keep the rhythm of the club head and the hands and arms off the ball 
somewhat subdued so that you've got the ability to give yourself time for your body to turn and pivot. Drill I really love for this. I put a ball about six or seven inches behind the ball I'm going to hit and I put it right on my target line. Now what I don't want to have happen is this. I don't want to have you take it back and whack that ball six or seven, eight, ten yards back there. That's no good. So what I want to have happen is I want you to be able to push this club back, I push this ball back with the club maybe four, five, six feet. It kind of depends on the turf you're hitting from. But when you learn to take it away there on a consistent basis, there. When you can get that sensation, then go ahead and <clears throat> put the ball down and go. There's no reason to yank that club back. That's like saying, if I really get in reverse out of my driveway faster, I'm going to get to town sooner. Not going to happen. Take your time going back, take your time off the ball, and you'll be much better positioned at the top of your backswing to sequence properly coming down. Costas and McCord off their rockers, presented by Swing U. We'll be right back. GPS, scorecard, stats, instruction. Join more than 6 million golfers who use and trust Swing U. Get accurate distances to greens and hazards. Store your rounds and scorecards and receive a handicap for life. Upgrade to get wind speed and elevation. Plays like distances, shot tracking, club recommendations, green reading maps, strokes gain stats, and personalized lessons and drills. Download Swing U and start owning your game today. Ono's Pit Barbecue, an authentic Southern Pit Barbecue experience you won't forget. At Bono's, you'll find a genuine down-home pit barbecue experience, the whole experience. Our entire menu is smoked and prepared in-house from our mouth-watering smoked meats to our delicious sides made from scratch. Our smoker is always smoking and everything to order, no shortcuts. 20 locations across the country, from the Sunshine State of Florida to the Rocky Mountains. Bono's culture is unmistakable at each of our restaurants. We offer incredible opportunities for franchisees. To find out more, visit our website, bonosbarbecue.com slash franchise. And remember, if you don't have a pit, it ain't legit. Visit our website, costasmccord.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel or podcast, and follow us on social media at Cisnmccord off their rockers. Thanks so much for being with us and watching our show today. We've got some great episodes coming up in the very near future. Boy, Trevor Murphy's incredible. Uh, Coach Costas is always got some great tips, and we'll have more to come in the next few weeks right here on Costas and McCord off their rockers. Thanks again to all of our sponsors, Swing You and the Swing You app, Foresight Sports, their launch monitor, and Sim in a Box, CMC Design, Bono's Barbecue. And remember, like, subscribe, and share, and hit that notification button so you do not miss an episode. For Peter and Gary, I'm Mike Abram. We'll be back with you real soon on Costas and McCord, Off Their Rockers.